Hello friends, welcome to the course of Code Igniter 4 RESTful API Development Using Silt Authentication. Now from this video session guys, we are going to start our first phase of API development processes and that will be API development without using any authentication. So this is our very first video of this first phase of API development. So we'll discuss all about our development plans, what will follow inside this first phase of API development. Go back to slide. So as we had discussed inside our discussion all about our introduction video that in the very basics concept of Code Igniter 4 will cover all about its introduction, Spark CLI, controllers and model, route group, routes namespace, filters, migrations, seeder and many more. So all these concepts now we have covered inside our basics of Code Igniter 4 session. Now next, we'll start our first phase of API development and inside this first phase of API development, we'll see all the concept of API development processes but will not include any type of authentication. It means that we don't have any concept of login, registration and so on. But instead, we'll create all the APIs of a CRUD application. CRUD means create, read, update and delete. Go here. So inside first phase of API development without any authentication, these are our let's say summary points what we'll cover inside this whole process of first phase. First we need to create a migration call students. By the help of that migration file, we'll create our first table and that will be a single only table for this first phase of API development and inside that table, it contains the column as ID, name, email, phone and profile image. So this is overall the system what we'll create inside this first phase of students management system. Inside this table, we'll perform all our CRUD APIs processes like inside APIs. First API will create called Add Student API and while calling this API, we'll use POST request type because inside this API call, we'll pass form data and inside that form data, these are the values what we'll have called name, email, phone and profile image. So this is a syntax of API route that will be something has a API prefix. It means we'll use the concept of route group and inside that route group API is a prefix and this is a route called add hyphen student. So once we hit this add hyphen student, it will call a controller method and that controller method will receive some form data and by the help of form data in terms of all these values, then we'll create our students and save inside this students table. So after adding our students into this table, now next we'll have the API of list students API. By the help of that, we'll list all the students what we'll have inside this table. So to call this API, we'll use get request type. And the route syntax will be something called API as a prefix and this is the route. So whenever we hit this route call list hyphen students, it will call a controllers method and that method will query our database table and list all the students. So suppose we are getting all the students but we are interested to actually get a single student information. So in that case, this API will be used called single student details API. So whenever we call this API using get request type, we'll pass a student ID into URL. After getting a student ID into URL of the API method, then we'll fetch the single student information from table. Now next we have update student API, Na name itself clears that by using this update student API we'll use put request type or batch request type and by the help of student ID and form data we'll update the existing students information. And finally we'll have the concept of delete student API, we'll call using delete request method and once we pass this student ID into API URL, then the controllers method will delete that specific student from students table. So this is the overall structure or skeleton of API development processes what will follow inside this first phase of API development. So overall, from the basics concept of Code Igniter 4, now we have a lots of concept what we'll use inside this API development.
So first thing first, before developing all these APIs and its development processes, we need a fresh setup. Because inside last video, we had seen all about the concept of basics for this folder structure, but we want to create a new setup for our first phase of API development. So let's start it with a composer and install our new project here. Back to browser, this is the official website that is coordinator.com. I will click on download button. It will redirect into a download page. So inside this section called coordinator 4, I will click on user guide. It will redirect into the user guide documentation and from documentation we will go and copy our composer command and install into our project. So inside installation, I will click on this composer installation. Now if I scroll all about this composer installation document. So here as we can see here we have a command. So I will copy. Go back to slide. Let's open a new tab and paste it here. This time let's say it will be ci4-api or let's say silt-api hyphen let's say phase 1. I will copy the whole command. Go back to terminal, we are inside this learn-ci which is a folder and inside this folder we want to create another project here. So I will go and paste this command press enter. So by using composer we are creating our new setup and one more thing before running this command make sure that inside your system composer must be installed. So successfully as we can see that project has been downloaded and installed into our system. So this is the folder. I will open this setup into my VS Code editor. So successfully I have imported our project setup into my VS Code. Now next let's go and execute first inside browser back to terminal. If I type ls here we can see two folders. This was our for the basic and this is here for the first phase of API development. So I will go inside CI4. Let's say silt silt and this is for the first phase folder. Now I am inside this first phase of API development setup. So let's say php spark serve. I will start the development server. Press enter development server started. So to access application we need to open this URL. So right click click on open link. It will go into our chrome browser and open our project setup. And we can see here welcome to code igniter 4.3.4. Now everything is ready. Now one more thing we can do inside this video is that as we know that inside this first phase of API development we want a database so that inside that database this migration it means students migration will create a dynamic table with all these columns. So let's quickly create a database and connect with application. So here inside my phpMyAdmin I am passing my login details here click on go button. So here we have the dashboard of phpMyAdmin, click on databases. Now what I will do, I will go and let's copy the setup name. Go here, paste it here and I will create the db name with the same name. So instead of hyphen, I will replace with underscore. So copy the name phpMyAdmin, click on databases. Right here we need to pass a database name. So I have passed. Click on create button. So successfully, now we can see that now we have a database. Right now we don't have any table but inside coming video, we'll create a migration of students table and create this table into that. Now next we need to connect this database with application. So what I will do, I will go and copy this db name. So let's copy that. Go back to VS Code, open up env file but make sure that this env should be renamed into from env to .env. Once you do that, all about the renaming of this file, go inside this file. So the first step, let's remove this hash symbol and change from production to development. So why we are changing from production to development and it is because when we do any type of development, 
if we get any error so instead of oops or some kind of different error messages actually we want some development issues development exceptions so that we can fix that so to get development exceptions and error messages directly to our browser screen we have changed from production to development scroll down go inside databases so here we have our default database group so i will remove this hash symbol from here let's remove that and here localhost is okay because we are using localhost database name so this is the name in my case phmi admin user is admin and password is admin at rate 123 and all the values are okay so successfully inside this video we have discussed all about our development plans that what will follow inside this first phase of api development also we have installed a new setup and connected with a database now in the next video we will see some more development concept of this first phase of api development so for this video session guys thank you for watching and have a great day